This is a production of Cornell University. So, um, hello everyone. I'm going to speak today a bit about uh, my master's thesis work on the evaluation and improvement of dry beans for regional staple crop production here in the northeastern United States. Okay, so very briefly, there are two centers of domestication in common bean, um, as well as various ecogeographic races within them. Um, some of these races are represented by our modern bean market classes. Um, between these races, we see various divergences in morphology, phenology, and resistances to abiotic and biotic stress. Uh, for example, the Middle American race Durango, which includes modern day pintos, is adapted to arid hot environments, while the Andean race Nueva Granada, that includes kidney, kidney beans, is uh, better adapted to short seasons and cooler environments. So crossing between races is a useful tool for improving adapted traits. However, some recent work has shown that greatly reduced diversity within modern market classes um, has occurred compared to uh, the domesticated gene pool as a whole. Um, so this indicates that fewer crosses are being made between races. Um, and this is in part due to very specific seed quality traits that are required by um, the processing industry, which is the predominant market uh, for dry beans here in the US. And this issue has been cited by breeders as an obstacle to uh, breeding progress, um, in particular within uh, Andean races, such as kidney. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, why beans in the Northeast? Um, well, first, the benefits of regional food production and diverse crop rotation systems to both, both economic and ecological health are well documented. Um, breeding and market effort, uh, market development efforts here in the Northeast um, have um, in the past 10 years increasingly focused on small grains, um, in particular um, specialty markets such as bakeries, breweries, and distilleries, um, but those efforts have not yet occurred for grain legumes, um, which is a potential rotation crop in that system. Um, in addition, in countries of the global north, such as the United States, um, lack, of, lack of access to healthy food um, tends to be more of a problem than access to food calories overall. Um, and this has created um, a public health crisis in our country and other Western countries. Um, we see at the same time, um, increased consumer interest in healthful foods, um, as well as increased concern for environmental impacts of food production. For example, the carbon footprint of meat consumption. So all of these trends, point to a need for beans that capture consumer interest, as well as a wider array of markets. So what are our research questions? Um, first, we want to know what the obstacles are to current regional dry bean production. Um, second, does regional production, including organic production, have distinct needs for variety development? And third, can the development of varieties outside of market classes better meet re me needs for regional production. So what are our strategies? Um, first strategy is to make sure that our program is meeting actual needs by engaging with stakeholders. And that means assessing grower and supply chain needs as well as opportunities. Um, second is to evaluate cultivars and potential breeding material um, in replicated research station as well as on farm trials. And third is the development of improved cultivars to meet regional grower and market needs. And due to the nature of regional supply chains, this work interestingly does not need to be restricted by market class designation, um, which as I mentioned can be a significant limiting factor in breeding progress. So um, for the needs assessment stage, um, the strategies we used were first um, qualitative interview, interviews with growers, processors, 
distributors and reta retailers in the regional bean supply chain. Um, second was a nationwide grower survey targeting organic and direct market producers. And third, um, of course, some literature reviews which focused on particular on uh, seed borne pathogens as this is a common issue in bean production in uh, more temperate climates such as ours. So one fairly recent phenomenon um, is single variety marketing of heirloom dry beans, which I won't unpack in entirely here, but does represent a market trend that we can work with to support regional production, um, especially in countries um, such as the United States, uh, where income levels are generally rather high. Um, consumer choice is based on a complex array of factors, among them food culture, cooking quality, aesthetics, as well as price. Um, and growers have recognized this consumer demand um, and due to price premiums, uh, the production of heirloom cultivars has become uh, economically viable even though often these varieties have uh, greatly reduced yields. Um, and in our surveys, grower also cited some agronomic advantages to the heirloom cultivars they are grow <coughs> excuse me, growing. Um, especially in more northern latitudes where mat short maturity time was very important. So um, as I mentioned, seed borne pathogens um, are a significant challenge in temperate bean growing regions. Um, these include bean common mosaic virus, uh, common bacterial blight, halo blight and anthracnose, um, which tend to be the most prevalent. Um, effective Effective resistance to these pathogens is especially important in organic production where seed treatments are limited. Um, importantly, most of the heirloom cultivars I mentioned um, that we grow here in, um, in the Northeast are Andean races that are highly susceptible to these pathogens. Um, prior research has identified sources of resistance um, in Vulgaris germplasm as well as other Fasciolus species. Many of these resistances have been introduced to elite lines that meet agronomic and quality trait requirements for commercial production. And we're able to adapt available codominant SNP markers developed by the USDA for bacterial blight, BCMV, and anthracnose that will be useful to our program going forward. So we conducted variety trials using a random complete block design at Thompson Research Farm, as well as on-farm trials um, in the mother baby trial design. Um, and these trials were used to evaluate modern cultivars, older cultivars, um, heirlooms and land races commonly grown here in the Northeast, um, as well as breeding lines with useful disease resistances. So uh, USDK CBB15 uh, possesses loci for resistance to the pathogens I mentioned previously, bacterial blight, anthracnose, and BCMB, as well as halo blight, um, and has linked markers um, for these loci. So we observed very significant differences in susceptibility between the resistant breeding line um, and some of the heirloom cultivars from the Northeast, such as Jacob's cattle. Um, we were able to observe that in under natural disease pressure um, in the field last summer. Um, CBB15 also demonstrates appropriate maturity time for our region, as well as um, upright growth habit and relatively high yield. So you also see that some non-market um, class Older cultivars such as candy and stardust demonstrated yield that was as good or better as um, this elite breeding line, um, as well as moderate, though not high, disease resistance. And this indicates that there are cultivars out there that growers might not know about, but that might meet their needs currently for uh, commercial production outside of conventional market classes. So varieties in yellow uh, were selected um, for breeding work. And we picked Calypso and Jacob's cattle as they are already grown widely in our region as well as um, other regions of the United States. So they have significant consumer recognition and uh, could greatly be improved with um, 
enhanced disease resistance. So through our needs assessments, uh, we are able to establish kind of a baseline of consumer and grower facing traits that will guide our breeding work going forward. Um, so these include on the consumer end, uh, cooking quality, as well as bean types that are bred for diverse culinary uses. Um, color retention and cooking is another one. Um, and in terms of grower traits, yield of course, upright architecture, disease resistance, appropriate maturity time for the Northeast, um, as well as seedling vigor and weed competitiveness were um, cited as the most important traits for growers. We used a fairly straightforward marker assisted pedigree selection scheme for this breeding project um, with the goal to introduce disease resistance, higher yield and improved growth habit into uh, the Calypso and Jacobs cattle heirloom cultivars using CBB15 as um, the other parent. Um, Codominant SNP markers were used to select progeny with resistance to um, bacterial blight, anthracnose, and uh, being common mosaic virus. So the initial goal was to essentially regain all the seed traits of the heirloom and release sort of a, an improved heirloom cultivar, um, which um, is still the plan, but many other interesting phenotypes that you can see here have also emerged. So we will conduct F4 progeny row selection um, this field season. And that wraps it up. Hope it's been fun. Uh, thanks to my lab for all their help, my committee and other faculty here at Cornell who's, who have uh, contributed input. Um, I'm very grateful to the public bean breeding community, which um, is incredibly willing to share advice and germplasm. Um, also all the growers, um, processors, and everyone who contributed ideas. Um, as well as my funding sources, USDA NIFA and Northeast SARE. Many thanks. Okay, questions? Are we doing questions? <laughs> do you have a question? Do you have a question there, Kristen? Do you see it? Oh, here we go. Yes. One minute. Okay. Were all of the varieties you so showed Andean or were some Mesoamerican? So, um, in terms of our trials, which I think is probably what you're referring to, Jeff. Um, so all of these except for Orca, which is right here. Can you see my screen right now? I'm not sure. No, um, no we see, see you. You're not sharing anymore. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So yes, the predominant, um, mostly they're Andean because that is what is grown in the Northeast. They tend, those tend to be determinant and um, shorter season, which is um, kind of what's better adapted. Um, black beans, for example, are Mesoamerican. So, so we've been primarily working in Andean, but I think there's a lot of potential to expand options in the Mesoamerican gene pool too. Thanks. Okay. Does, so, uh, does dry bean production in the Northeast require any specialized equipment or can soybean farmers grow dry beans easily? That's a really good question. So um, the smaller seeded uh, types such as black beans, navy beans, um, generally can be um, planted and harvested with the same combine as soybeans. Um, types like um, kidneys and cranberries um, tend to be lower growing. So they're a type one determinant instead of the upright type two. So those generally are um, harvested using a bean puller, and that actually is uprooting the plant. Um, and then it's windrowed into a row and then uh, combined using a pickup head. Um, so it, it, that does generally require more specialized equipment. Okay, um, how many loci did you manage at once with marker assisted selection and how did you man manage population size to deal with multiple traits? Um, so in, so this mostly refers to um, the F2 population, which I grew out last summer. And so um, I was, a, I grew out about 400 plants and I was selecting for um, two loci for bacterial blight, 
um, one loci for BCMV acnose. And essentially what I do, did, um, you know, given that I had 400 progeny was to prioritize. So BCMV is our, you know, major R gene resistance. So that was kind of the first requirement. And then I essentially selected for either bacterial blight or, um, you know, paired with BCMV or BCMV and anthracnose um, to kind of improve my ability to, to advance okay. you know, those lines. Thank you. This has been a production of Cornell University on the web at cornell.edu.